Hi everyone, welcome back to some more 3D printing. I'm Austin Flawalistic and today I want to show you how to transform any 3D printing file into a voxelized version of it. And the best thing, it's free. In case you didn't know, a voxel is to a 3-dimensional object the same a pixel is to an image. So what we are going to do is like pixelating a 3D model. It's not correct, I know, but let's call it that way. I wanted to try to create voxelized 3D printable designs since I did my first low-poly designs, such as the Star Wars characters or my low-poly Pokemon. It's like, you know, I'm really interested in pixel art and low poly was my answer to pixel art applied to 3D printing. We can, we can say that, yes. Lots of you ask me how to design that low poly models and my design process is really complex and nonsense. I've got some great news about this and it's that the system I use to voxelize any 3D printing file is really easy, free and the best thing it can be applied to any 3D model. Voxels may remind you of Minecraft and we are going to use some tools that were created specifically to transform 3D models from Minecraft to 3D printing files. Now I want to show you all the design process you need to follow to, to transform any 3D model into a voxelized version and there are many details I want to show you on how to do it perfectly. First we need to choose an STL file. I'm going to choose these octopus magnets made by Kerry the Watt just because I want to try with a different model from any of my designs just to show you how you can transform any STL file into a voxelized version. Also it's because Tom from Tom 3 Printing made a joke on Twitter about how Japanese like to pixelate things and I thought about tentacles and octopuses and you know some of you may get the joke. The most important step and the biggest one will be using Tinkercad. This is an online app from Autodesk and what we are going to do is import the Octopus STL file we just downloaded from Thingiverse. So you can see the importing process is super super easy and what we need to do just is just import the STL file and we get to select the size. When you import it you will be asked to select the size you want it to be and that's going to be important but, but if you want you can always resize it again and that's going to be important. We need to use this tool that is on the top right, the voxelizer and this tool what it's going to do is transform it into something that we are going to be able to use on Minecraft. Here you can see there are many You've got like a small tree, I think it's a size reference. But what we need to do now, we need to up, we need to select one of the different qualities or complexity of the models we need, we want. As you can see, there's a very, very big difference between, for example, the most complex one, which is the one I usually use, compared to the medium quality and low quality. There is no way this looks like an octopus. So what I really recommend you to do and what I've done with this octopus model I'm showing you is I chose the complex, the most complex size, but what I did was to go back and forth between the normal modification setup and resize the model because if you make it really small, uh, one important thing, it doesn't keep the proportions, so be careful with that. Well, but what I did was resizing the octopus. I made it smaller because this way, when you go to the voxelizer option, you will see that it changes the way it arranges the polygons because the, mo the smaller it is, the smaller the blocks, the, um, the fewer blocks are on this model. The, I think it's because there's a limit on the size of the voxels in Minecraft so you need to sacrifice some of the quality if you use a smaller model and, the, and I've been playing with that and in the end I got some nice details it's enough complex for me and on the other side it can be printed really small with a 3D printer 
with no problems with the voxels because there are some independent parts that may be a little bit tricky. So what we need to do now when we've got the model we want is we need to export it. There's a button on the top right part and what you're going to get is a schematic file which is a file that is used always with Minecraft. What we need to do is go to the next software that will help us export, transform this schematic file into an STL file or object file. Both are usually compatible with any slicer such as Cura or some others. The next software we are going to use will let us transform the schematics file into an STL file or object file. We need to open our own world, which is the schematic file. And what we are going to get here is this top view of the octopus. With right click, we need to select the octopus we want and we, with these bars that are on the front, we need to select how many height polygons we want to choose, like what? Like some x-rays. This way we are going to select all the model. And what we need to do is just select file and then, then you have different options like export for rendering, sketchfab, schematic again, or export for 3D printing. We are going to select this option and we need to select the format before there's STL or object file, we are going to select object file because I think it has more options and there are some things you need to take into consideration before exporting it. By default, this will export a hollow model, so you need to check and check this option so it's a solid model with no holes on the inside. This way you can decide with your slicer whether it's hollow or you use some infill, which I really recommend. We need to select some other options, the size of you, if you wanted any color, but I don't think that's relevant, and also the size of each block, but that doesn't really matter because you are going to resize it with your slicer afterwards. So now we need to export this STL or object file and open it with our slicer software. One more step you don't need to forget before going to your slicer software is that the model you just voxelized may not be fully compatible with 3D printing. This is an optional step, but I prefer to be careful with my designs, especially if I'm going to share them with everyone. 3D printers have some problems when printing overhangs, and I don't really like support material. So what I did was importing the object file I just exported from Mindwise, and what I did was transforming it into a transformable model on Autodesk Fusion 360. This way I was able to modify the shape a little bit. And the first thing was removing this hole in the bottom part that was for a magnet, I think. But the most important thing we need to take into account is these overhangs from the different voxels. What we need to do with them is transforming them into fillets. And we need just to be a little bit careful with them, you don't need an 80 degree overhang, you just can use a 45 degree overhang as, as I just did, and it should be enough. The bad part of all this is that you may need to check all the model as I did, but in the end the, res the printing result is amazing. You don't need any support material to print it, and it's still a very complex model. This way we are just going to repeat the same process, edit all the voxels that are floating and apply some fillets. These fillets need to be the same size or pretty close to the voxel size, which will depend on how you export it from main ways. But once you have the model ready, you just need to re-export the STL file and now we can go to the slicer software. I'm using Cura BCN 3D version as my slicer, so I'm going to print it with my BCN 3D Sigma. The only thing we really need to check on the slicer is that the voxels are enough big. You may want to resize it, but I made sure it works in my case. I just want to check that everything is going to be printed correctly. Like for example, the infill percentage should be like 10% maybe, depending on your model, as always but also that the, for example, nozzle size 
is enough big if your voxels are too small. I tricked Kira and told it that I was using a 0.35mm nozzle, but I'm using the 0.4mm nozzle. This will make lines slightly thinner, but it should show some more details. Now let's move to the printer and see how it's printed. Well, I ran out of elevator music, but let's see how this original STL file was transformed into this voxelized and optimized octopus. Now you can create any pixelated version of any 3D model. I've left some links in the description to all the software you need to do the process of transforming any 3D model into a voxelized version. I've also left a link to download the voxelized octopus I just designed. And if you have any question about the process, just use Twitter or the comment section below. Also, if you voxelize any 3D model, don't forget to share some pictures with me and also the files. I would love to see them, to see all your creativity and what you transform. Also, if you enjoyed with this tutorial and you love voxelized or pixelized things, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Also, if you want to support this crazy experiments and all my projects, I invite you to check my Patreon page. There you will get access to exclusive content and updates. Also, I would like to thank all my Patreon MVPs, which are listed in the description below. And that's it for today. Hope you've enjoyed with Voxelite versions and octopuses. And see you next time.